Let's laugh and learn from this handyman with Kitty Hold This by Hey folks, thanks for dropping in today. Have you ever had trouble hiring a painter? Have you ever had trouble getting the painter that you hired to actually show up? Have you ever hired a painter and while they were at your house, you thought to yourself, hmm, well that doesn't look too difficult. And have you ever been painting yourself and thought to yourself, gee, those pros make it look easy? Well, you're in luck because today I'm gonna give you every single pro tip that I've ever learned in just a couple of minutes. My first job in the trades was in painting. So you're totally in luck because I've been painting a long time and I know a lot of cool little tricks. Hi, I'm Tommy Highland, America's Funniest Handyman. And you found the right place. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, this is where you wanna be to learn how to work on your house. We got videos on just about everything that you can think of and every single one of them is a little bit entertaining. So you won't be bored out of your skull while you're trying to learn how to build a door or a bookcase or learn how to paint better or patch a hole. So anyway, thanks for being here today, folks. Why don't we get cracking? The first thing we gotta do is go get changed. I'm not gonna get paint on my nice new shirt that says America's Funniest Handyman on it. I'm gonna go put on an old t-shirt that's almost ready for the trash. Same thing with my pants. I'm wearing pants today that are basically ready for the garbage, okay? But they're still comfortable and I haven't ripped a hole in the booty. Okay, so anyway, um, first thing we gotta do after we get changed is we have to push everything into the middle of the room. You don't have to move everything out, just shove everything into the middle of the room and then throw a cover on it. A drop cloth or a plastic sheet, obviously something that you're not worrying about getting paint on. And then after we get that done, I'm gonna show you all of the cool little tools that you wanna use today so that the next time you're painting, it's gonna come out absolutely perfect and in just a fraction of the time, back in just a snap. Ba bam we're back, how about that? I'm gonna try and go really fast right now because I'm about to describe to you all of this stuff. I guarantee you, everything I have laid out here right now is exactly everything that you need to do a nice paint job in your house. Okay, let's get started real quick. Okay, you're gonna need a screwdriver to take off all the crap that's on the wall, including switch plates and coat hangers and hooks and whatever you have up. You're gonna need a scraper to scrape off all the little bits of tape and loose pieces of paint. You're gonna need a couple of tubes of caulk. I recommend using a matching color if, uh, if at all possible. In this case, we're doing gray and white. So I have white caulk. Whenever you're caulking, I recommend having a bucket of clean water and a rag to make things nice and smooth and keep everything clean. I always recommend having a couple extra rags to wipe things off. You're gonna need a spackle knife and some joint compound to take care of uh, whatever holes you have. And by the way, if you don't know how to patch holes, uh, there's a link down below that you can click on and I have a whole cool video on how to patch just about any size hole and make it completely disappear. Anyway, all right, so that's this half of the vulture. This half of the vulture and the tools is prep work. This half is finish work, painting. Okay, what do you need to paint? Okay, you're gonna need some roller sleeves. I recommend a heavy nap, like a thick nap, like half inch is nice because it puts a nice texture on the wall and it helps hide a multitude of sins and mistakes that uh, you don't wanna spend any more time on, frankly. Okay, you're gonna need a roller for your roller sleeve, a brush and a bucket with a hook so that you can hang your bucket of paint from your four foot ladder. <laughs> you're gonna need a four foot ladder, okay. Um, and then uh, you're gonna need your paint, obviously. In this case, I chose flat. In most rooms, I recommend flat because flat paint um, nowadays is typically a lot more washable uh, than it was when I was growing up. Um, I remember because I, I painted green crayon on our white chalky flat wall and it was there for years before it got fixed. Anyway, the last thing you're gonna want is uh, a grate. In case, because if you're, if you're new to painting, you've probably tried using one of these stupid pans. They're okay for little jobs, but anytime you're using a couple of gallons of paint, the tray is stupid, it's a pain in the butt to move around, it's very awkward. Nothing in the world of painting beats a bucket with a grate in it. The only reason this is new is I couldn't find my old one. I guarantee you, these things last for like 10 years. Uh, it doesn't matter how much paint gets on it, the next time you go to use it, it's dry. And, uh, and of course a bucket, if you rinse it out, can last you a long time. The, um, the stupid little trays, those, these, these dumb little trays are like a one-time use and it's a waste of money. So, get yourself a grate, this is $4, it'll last you for years, okay. and. Last but not least, a pole. You're gonna need a, a reach pole. That's it. All right, I'm gonna take all my switch plates off. I'm not gonna bore you to death by showing you me taking off the switch plates. I'm just gonna go ahead and get it done. And then we're gonna hit right for our P. 
painting tutorial where I'm gonna teach you how to cut in this whole room. We call it cutting in. We're gonna teach you how to cut in before we get to rolling. Okay, you wanna hang out for the entire tutorial because I've got a lot of really great tips that I'm gonna give you at every single step and I'm not gonna take a lot. So years ago, I spent a lot of time on job sites in Washington, D.C. with a guy named Ricardo. And that's the guy that I picked to come back tonight to show you guys how to caulk cracks and how to do it beautifully and efficiently because Ricardo really knows his stuff. Hola, Tommy. All right. So glad to be called back by my friend, Tommy. I haven't seen him for a long time. So anyway, he want me to teach you how to cook. I always tell him when he was a, when he was a young carpenter, I always tell him he come to me and uh, he always bring in the pieces of the trim and they, they uh, you know, they don't, they don't look so good. And I always tell him, Tommy, it's okay, it's okay. I put a mucho cooking, mucho cooking fix everything, okay? And that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna fix your cook. We're gonna fix all the cracks. So, I always like to cut a nice little angle right there, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna make it so you put a cook in the crack, but not too much, you know? A little bit, maybe just a little bit more than you think you're gonna need. And you get your finger, bucket, the water, agua. A little bit of wet. And that's it. Beautiful, huh? So the trim is gonna stay white. The uh, uh, the wall is gonna be gray. So the cork gives you a very nice uh, clean line so that when you come back with your brush, this is not a brush, but when you come back with your brush, you can make the clean lines. So we're gonna use the cork for my friend Tommy. Tommy! We're gonna take the cork and I'm gonna cook every single inside corner to make it very nice, huh? Yes. Very nice like that. Dude, bro, give me some. Awesome. Dude, I, I can't believe I haven't seen you in so many years. Thanks for coming by, Ricardo. Oh, Tommy, no problem, man. Thanks for calling. I haven't seen you in so long. All right, man, take care. Huh. Uh, remember, Ricardo, I tell you. Mucho cooking, fix everything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. A big round of applause. And a thank you for my friend Ricardo for coming by today. Uh, I haven't seen him in over 20 years. I'm surprised that he's uh, still around and still caulking. Next thing we got to do is uh, we're going to start painting. But let's review what we've done so far. Because we have done a lot of good prep work that's going to make it very simple and easy to have a beautiful paint job. So what have we done? We've cleaned, which is removing everything off of the walls and getting all the dust off of the baseboards. Uh, we went around and we scraped all the loose paint and little boogers off of the walls and all that good stuff. Paint goobers, excuse me. Uh, we uh, went around and patched all the holes that needed to be patched with spackle and sanded them. And uh, we caulked all of the goobery and uh, gross little corners and cracks and stuff like that so that now we can just put a clean coat of paint on it. So the next step is to cut in with a brush before we roll. And what does that mean? That means we're gonna cut in down here along the baseboards and we're gonna cut in around the windows because the windows are gonna stay white and we don't wanna paint them gray. So why don't I have tape over here, but I'd have some tape down here? Well, after you get uh, proficient with the stuff that I'm teaching you in this video, you're gonna find that the only things that you really need to tape off are the things that need to be protected from uh, overspray from your roller, and uh, drops if you happen to uh, make any drips and drops like that. So I have a piece of tape covering the baseboard because as I roll this all out, I'm gonna be splattering paint off of the roller and I wanna make sure that it doesn't uh, come off and land on the baseboard or the uh, floor. Okay, so for this tutorial, I really wanted to pick the absolute best person I could think of to teach you how to paint properly. And the one name that kept popping into my head was my oldest friend in the painting business, Gary the Painter. So, I called him, even though he's a little toasted, he's still painting and he wants to teach you guys. So put your hands together for one of the best guys in the entire business, Gary the Painter. What's going on guys? Hey man, how are you? You guys, uh, I'm Gary, you remember me? Well, <laughs> Tom remembers me, man. We go way back, man. I used to paint houses in Petaluma. We used to paint houses in Sonoma County, Marine County, California. It was really cool, man. <laughs> so listen, um, 
uh, Tommy called me up, man, and uh, he asked me if uh, I would teach you how to cut a straight line on the wall so that you don't have to use blue tape everywhere you go, man. So, anyhow, uh, let's start with your brush. Okay. Oh, no, I know what I wanted to start with, man. I wanted to start uh, by telling you why. Yeah, that's right, why you should uh, learn how to cut uh, straight lines with a brush instead of using blue tape everywhere, man. Uh, one, <laughs> no brainer, <laughs> it'll save you money on tape, man. Tape's expensive and bad for the environment. Anyway, okay, cool. Um, have you ever noticed that sometimes, a lot of times, man, like you take the tape off and there's still stuff underneath, man. You still gotta do work. So a lot of times tape doesn't even work, man. But I'll tell you why that is. That happens because you put too much like paint right up against the tape. But okay, so anyway, those two things combined, man, will save you a ton of time and a lot of money. Who doesn't want to save time and money? Okay, enough of that, dude. That felt like a commercial. That was weird, man. Okay, so um, next thing, it's easy. It's not that hard, man. All you gotta do is let the bristles of the brush do the work. Now, uh, this is the kind of brush I've been using for like my whole life, man. Okay, it's a three inch angular brush. Dude, my garbage in my basement is full of these. I think I'm like saving them to make a giant necklace or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, a two and a half or a three inch angular brush will allow you to do just about anything you need to do. It's because of this little point right there, man. When the brush is all wet with paint and stuff, man, you can, you can get inside all these little tiny spots, man, little points and everything. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, all right? But we gotta cover a couple of things first, all right? Okay, I like to wear knee pads when I know I'm gonna be crawling around a room for a couple of hours. Cause uh, I remember me and Tommy, we always talked about that, man. I always told Tommy like, hey, if you're gonna be doing the same thing for a couple of hours, you might as well make yourself comfortable. Dude, and uh, these knee pads are really comfortable, man. It's like my knees are on pillows, man. Okay, first off, you wouldn't believe this, man, but the amount of paint that you put in your bucket, man, is really important to being a good painter. Because if you just dump a whole bunch in there and then you try to leave your brush in the bucket, your brush gets all covered and messy and gross. And that makes it difficult to be a neat painter. So I always tell people, how far, how much paint do you want on your brush? You want to dip your brush to about there, right? So that's how much paint you want to put. I always keep one of these on me when I'm painting because you never know when you're going to come across a little piece of scotch tape or God forbid, like somebody's booger or something like that. And then you can just scrape it off because I'll tell you what, man, whenever I tell myself I'm going to come back to it later, <laughs> I always totally forget, man. <laughs> I don't know why somebody said wear a respirator that I should have worn a respirator. All right, here's how I shake a gallon of paint up. Um, because a lot of times, man, you get it from the paint store and then it's like a week or two or sometimes a couple months before you're ready to go or maybe it's been sitting on the shelf in the garage. This is how I shake them. So now you just wanna pour that much. I jiggle the little drips off, man. And then before it gets all gross and runs all over the place, I just go like that. And then I always clean the inside rim out. Whoa. And then I put the lid back on. And I tap it down. Cause I don't want it to accidentally tip over. Now I'm ready to cut a line. Cause look, I can keep my brush in there and it doesn't get covered with paint. So I can set it down anywhere. Okay, so that's number one. Put the right amount of paint in your bucket, man. Number two. Number two is be neat with your bucket and your paint. Because a lot of times, man, a sloppy bucket and a sloppy brush, it just ends up getting all over the place, man. So that's it. All right. 
Now I'm going to show you how to cut a line. You want to let the bristles do the work, okay? So let's say that these two walls were going to be a different color, all right? I'm going to use it as practice to try and make a straight line. So the first thing you do to make a straight line is you get your brush up against the wall and your brush kind of becomes nice and straight by itself as you start to drag it down the wall. Well, when that happens, you just get closer and closer to your line until you find it. And then you just drop on down, man. And just go in a nice straight line. Let's see. See that? I'll let the brush do the work, man. Like once you find that sweet spot, your hand can still go back and forth, but the brushes kind of stay where they're supposed to be, man. And the cool thing is, bro, even if you mess it up, you're gonna come back with the other color and touch it up later anyway. But this corner, we're just gonna slop it a little bit because we need to get it into the corner. And the reason we gotta do those inside corners is because there's no way to get a roller in there and have it come out nice, man. You gotta run brush on these. And the last thing you do before you walk away is you give it a nice little layoff, dude. Get all the drips and make it feather real nice and sweet, man. Okay, now, whenever you're doing one that's next to the tape, you don't want to have a brush that's all totally wet and soaked with paint. You want to have a brush that's just got a little bit of paint. So right, that way, when you come up against the tape, you're not soaking the tape full of paint so that the paint creeps in behind it. Okay, this is the cool part. We're gonna cut in around the trim with this big giant fat brush. But watch the way this point gets into the nooks and crannies, man. Let me get the camera so you can see closer. And remember, the last thing you want to do before you walk away, man, is lay it off, baby. That's right. See how these brush strokes are all going in different directions? Laying it off means that you're walking away and all those brush strokes are now feathering, feathering in the right direction. Okay, cool. All right, so that's it, man. So I'm going to put the camera up in the corner of the room and then we're going to get to number five or six. I don't remember how many numbers we went over, man. I don't know how important it is things to do. But um, the most important thing when you're painting is to have some sweet tunes on, bro. Okay? So I'm probably going to be listening to some Skinner or maybe some Sabbath or maybe even some uh, Bob Marley. I like Bob Marley sometimes. Anyway, I'm going to put some tunes on, put the camera up in the corner, and uh, you guys will watch the time lapse of me cutting in this whole room to the sweet sounds of one of Tommy's really super cool friends, Mark Benanti. Enjoy. Okay, man, I totally forgot to tell you one important thing, man. You always want to have a wet rag with a clean bucket of water somewhere nearby in case you have a mess or you get paint on something that you don't want to get paint on, you can just wipe it right off before it dries. Okay, let's cut this whole room in, man. And then as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna come back and flip this around and show you how to cut in a crown molding without tape and a big fat three inch angular brush, man. All right on. Maybe you can't tell a joke but when your stuff gets broke. What do you do? Tommy a call, whether it's large or small, there's no project he can't see through. Let's laugh and learn from this handyman, with Kitty hold this by his side. Fixing stuff in a serious way, with a not so serious guy. Okay you guys, check this out man. I'm going to use this three inch angular brush to cut in this Sweet crown profile right here. Check this out, man.
Swing the hammer, turn the screw. Cut the saw and stick the glue. Shave the shim, clean the vise. Cut once, measure twice. Drill the hole and fill the hole. Put the thingy in the hole. Be sure you're having fun. Measure twice, cut once. I'm gonna let that dry for a second, man. Then you'll be able to see like the stark contrast and how sweet it is and how long did that take me, bro? What, like a minute? I don't know. Drill the hole and fill the hole. Put the thingy in the hole. Be sure you're having fun. Measure twice. Cut. Hey, man, listen. We're all finished with the brushwork, but I'm not gonna clean my brush yet because I don't know if I'm gonna need it to do any touch-ups. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this wet rag that I've been carrying around and I'm just gonna lay it over the top, man. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep my paint from drying out and skimming over while I'm getting ready to roll these walls out. But what I wanna do, man, is I wanna give you a, a little tutorial on how to roll out your paint, man, because a lot of people don't know how to do it. Man, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get get the lid off your paint. Man. I already shook both of these up. I showed you how to do that earlier. Man. So I'm just going to pour all this because I got to do the whole room. Man. I know I'm going to need two gallons. Man. So I'm going to pour all two gallons into this bucket. And you're going to see how much easier it is to use a bucket than one of those stupid little trays, man. Those trays are for people that don't know what they're doing, man. Okay, there's one gallon. And there's the other, man. I like it. It's neat watching the paint drip out like that, man. It always makes me. I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna splash a little water in them later. And then I'm gonna get all the rest of the paint out. If you splash just a little bit of water in your empty paint can, you can get another like half a quart or something like that out of there. All right, so we're about to roll out this section of wall, man. So I got a nice heavy nap, thick nap on here. It's gonna leave a nice textured effect, man. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this roller wet with paint, dude. Get it all soaked good, dude. Put it way down in there, man. And then I'm just gonna rub off the excess on that grid that we put in the bucket, dude. Now, you always want a handle like this, like an extension pole or something like that. And the only time you're ever gonna take it off is when you need to get in little tight areas because this guy is ergonomically correct, man. And if you don't know the meaning of the word ergonomic, dude, well, just look it up, man. It's the thing that will help you stay in the trades forever without getting all messed up and having to get your joints replaced. Well, that and some yoga. All right, so got it. Now this right here. Now this right here, man, reminds me of a lesson somebody told me. He said, dude, there's really just three phases to painting. Like once you're actually painting, right? Like Tommy and Ricardo did an amazing job on the prep work, dude. Like. I didn't have anything to do while I was painting except paint. I didn't have to stop and scrape anything or caulk anything. Like those guys took totally care of everything. But when you're painting, there's three things you got to think of. One is, dude, get the paint on the building, man. Get the paint on the wall, man. And spread it around nice and even. So number one is, get the paint on the building, man. And number two is, spread the paint around evenly, man. And the last thing you wanna do, man, is the same thing I was telling you with the brushwork. Lay it off. Like the last thing you wanna do, dude, is lay it off. You wanna make sure your strokes are nice and even, you're taking care of the drips, and that's the same exact mentality that you can take with you when you go to do your trim work. Get the paint on the trim, get your edges done real nice, and then lay it off, bro. Okay, 
That's it, man. That's about the size of the sections you want to do at a time. Maybe four or five feet wide, lay it off, and then move on to the next spot. So what we're going to do is real quick, do like a five, 10 second time lapse, and then we'll have a wrap up. And that's it, bro. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being here, man. And thanks for using the paintbrush and the roller as like an extension of your body, dude. It's all about the feeling of um, hi folks, thanks for hanging out with us for the whole tutorial. I hope you got a lot out of it. Here's Gary with one more final little tip and then... Looks pretty sweet, right? Okay, this is a big one, dude. Okay, after you roll everything out, just walk away, man. Don't look at it while it's drying. And whatever you do, don't go back with your roller to try and touch things up until after everything's dry man trust me after you roll when the paint's dry and if you look at it it's just totally gonna mess with your head man it's not even worth it just walk away i'm gonna leave the time lapse on you can watch this stuff dry and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about man. and as always thanks for letting us bring a whole lot of experience and a little bit of humor onto your job site Fixing stuff in a serious way, but not so serious guy.